Hello everyone, it's Kathy and you're back here in my craft room and on my YouTube channel, Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin'. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator and I'm located in the state of North Carolina. If you're not currently working with a demonstrator, I would absolutely love the opportunity to earn your business. Uh, also, if you're interested in becoming a Stamping Up demonstrator, does that mean you have to do what I do? Absolutely not. You can be your own best customer. So if you're interested in purchasing Stamping Up products, um, I'll be more than glad to talk to you about that. You can shoot me an email or you can text me and have me call you at your convenience. Anyway, getting on with what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to be working with the Cheerful Basket and the Full Basket dies. This is a bundle in the annual catalog and it is such a cute bundle. You get this beautiful little basket that you can stamp. This is a photopolymer stamp and you can fill your basket with craft supplies, hearts, uh, apples, and you've got this cute little kitty that's sitting to the side and then you've got a butterfly and three beautiful sentiments that says inspired by you you fill my day with happiness sending you some get well cheer which all of this is great sentiments but we're going to use you fill my day with happiness and let me show you what I have in mind we're going to do it in a little bit on uh, different color but here's my little um prototype and I thought it turned out so cute so you can see we're going to do some ink blending we're going to pop that up on some dimensionals we're going to map behind it and then we're going to make this beautiful basket we're going to color it we're going to uh, stamp and color the pieces that go in the basket and what fills your day with happiness any more than our craft supplies so i thought with that being said uh, i've definitely wanted to make this card for everyone because i think this is something that as crafters, we could send to one another. Uh, we all can relate to the happiness that our that our craft supplies bring to us. Now, what you're going to need to make this card is a card base, and I chose the gorgeous grape for this one. It is eight and a half by five and a half, and I scored it at four and one fourth. A, a basic a, a two size card. You're going to need um, uh, two mats that are daffodil delight, and these are cut at four by five and a quarter and you need two of those. You're also going to need two basic white mats and they are cut at three and three fourths by five and one will be for the outside and one for the inside and then you're going to need a scrap of paper for your stamping. So let's go ahead and do our let's do our stamping first and get that out of the way. So I'm going to bring over the basket and the craft supplies and we are going to stamp those just like that. I am going to grab my Stamp and Pierce mat and I have one that is dedicated to just stamping and I think we're going to need that for this because these are photopolymer stamps. You need that little extra cushion um, whenever you're using photopolymer. So I'm going to pick this up on a stamp block like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the, I think we're going to need a different block for these. Let's try this one. Yeah, this will fit on here. Okay, with those on, we're going to stamp both of these in the Memento uh, Tuxedo Black ink. And the reason I'm going to use the Memento is we're going to use alcohol blends, our Stampin' Blend markers, to color these. The basket as well as the craft supplies. So just ink it up really good. And then we're going to bring it over and stamp it down. Give it a good press because you want that, to, that ink to transfer really well. So I'm giving it a, a good amount of time for, for that to really take. I want a nice bold image. Beautiful. Now we're going to do the same thing with our craft supplies. I'm going to bring over my Memento Tuxedo Black ink and we are going to ink this up. Just like that and I'm going to stamp this off right about here. Thank you. 
nice steady pressure. You don't want to rock your st your block. You want to make sure you go down directly straight. Do not rock and bring it up and this is what you have. Beautiful images. So let's go ahead and close up our ink pad. I'm going to set these to the side and let this dry while we do some ink blending. So we don't need this any longer, not right now anyway. I'm going to bring in a piece of grid paper and one of my three by five uh, inch pieces. Now that, yeah, it had a little bit of a um, um, smudge or something on that one side. So I'm going to I'm going to smooth down these edges where the cut the the cut line because sometimes these raise up just a little bit and when you start to ink blend it's going to grab the ink a little bit different so i'm going to bring in my stamp and blend brushes and my stamp and blend brushes are in a little holder like this this holder came from stamp and storage and if you want more information on it uh, i'll be glad to give it to you but i have one brush for each color family i don't think you can see that but i'll show you when i pull them off um, we're going to start off with some yellow so any of my yellow family i use this one for it i'm going to zoom y'all in just a little bit closer something like that so you can actually see what's going on and we're going to bring our yellow daffodil delight ink in i am going to move these to the side because they are kind of in my way so let's set them over here and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to tap 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 in that yellow ink now I re-inked this yesterday so it's going to be a little bit juicier than normal. I'm going to start swirling over here and then bring it to my paper. The reason I'm doing that, that keeps me from getting that blob of ink like I did here. So if I did this and I just started going like that, see I would have that big blob there? We don't want that. So we're going to tap and then start blending off of the paper and then onto the paper and i'm going to blend across this card all the way up to that top corner and down here to the bottom so i'm going to go back in and tap i'm going to bring this around because now i want to work that color up so just like this you have to be patient when you're ink blending it's not a fast process this is something to really just kind of relax and go with you don't want to rush it you just want to put down some beautiful color onto your cardstock all right I think we're good with this one so how I clean my brushes is I just rub them off on my grid paper or scrap paper if you don't have grid paper you can use copy paper anything underneath just to catch the ink. All right, I'm gonna come in next with some purples. And I brought in a lighter color, rather than the gorgeous grape that would be very stark, I'm bringing in Highland Heather. And again, I inked this yesterday, so it's gonna be a little juicy. So I wanna come in up here. So I'm gonna start blending Just a little color right there on that corner. And just keep going around in little circles like that, just to put down some color. So I'm done with this one for right now. Let's close up our yellow as well. Daffodil Delight, such a pretty shade of yellow. It's bright and sunshiny. And always when you close your ink pads, make sure they snap closed because um, it causes them to dry out a lot faster. I'm going to come in next with pink. And this is the Blushing Bride. And I'm going to grab my pink brush that's dedicated for pink. And again, I'm going to tap... 
And I'm going to come in right about here. And I'm just going to go up by that um, lavender. Nice soft swirls. Then I'm going to close this one. And I'm going to come back in with an orange. So I'm going to put my pink brush in it off. And let's grab our orange which is our pumpkin pie. I also use this in Calypso Coral and Cajun Crades because they all have a similar property of the orange um, hues. So let's just go in right here. A little bit of orange. I think I want a little bit more of that purple. So we're going to grab the Highland Heather again. I left my purple brush out for that reason because I knew that I would want to come back in with a little bit more of that shade of ink. So we're going to tap and then I'm going to come in right about here. Now, no two of these that you make will ever look the same. They will always look different. See, I came down on that right there. That's the mistake you don't want. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to fix this by doing this. It's gonna be a harsh line there. There's nothing that I can do about that. Okay, I'm gonna come back in with the pinks. blushing broad and let's see if we can blend this out a little bit with the blushing broad I don't think we're going to be able to blend that out but that's okay we're going to go with it We'll put it to the bottom. I think that'll be appropriate. I think that's about the way I'm going to leave that. I think I like that. I do wish I could blend that out a little bit more. Let's try the purple again. Maybe if we go in a lot heavier right there, we can camouflage it somewhat. just going to leave it. Okay, that's a rule in what not to do, <laughs> or a lesson in what not to do. I'm going to move my grid paper because I don't think I need that any longer. I save my grid papers and I use them over and over until they get where they look just a little too nasty to carry on. So um, let's go ahead and put our blending brushes back where they belong. And now we're ready to color our pieces. So I'm going to grab Stampin' Blends and I'm going to do, I think 
I'm going to do soft suede and maybe a little crumb cake. Let's see how these two will blend well for me. So the first thing I want to do is I want my darker color. So the dark soft suede, we're going to come in first. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make some little lines like right here where these little lines are at on my crossbars. And I do want to, um, my handle, I didn't do it on my other one, my other basket. Well, you know, it didn't really matter because I put this over it, but let's, we're going to, we're going to make it a, a color. And I think for a bucket, you need a nice red handle. So I'm, I've chose my dark real red and I'm going to go in and color my handle. And if you see what I'm doing, I'm coloring both edges and I'm going to streak just a tiny bit in like that and I'm going to grab the other real red, the light, and we're going to go in and blend. That gives us a little depth of color. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with my soft suede and this is the light soft suede. And I'm going to run some light suede up and down these pieces right here. Just to give a little definition down here. Go back with my dark. And I'm just going to go over some of these lines that need to be a little bit darker. Like the dark lines on that's on stamped down. I think those look really good like this. Then we're going to come in with the dark and we're just going to cross cross it. I know you're probably thinking, what are you doing? Just trust the process. And do the same across this bottom line. Does not have to be perfect. You don't want it to be perfect. This is a basket. It's going to have imperfections in it. We just want it to look realistic. So now I'm going to come in with my dark um, crumb cake. And we're going to pull some color. To the middle. You don't want to go all the way to the middle. You just want to leave little presence there of light in the middle. Now I've got to get into those little small places right there. So I'm going to change my tip, but not my color. I'm doing that so that I can get into here. Now we're going to come back with our light crumb cake. And we are going to blend in to the middle. Just like that. Just keep going back and forth. Blending all that color.
and I am going to change my tip. Just like that and see how that appears to make the basket look like you've got some light shining into the middle of it. You can always go back and add a little more color. And of course this leaves your basket looking very rustic as well. Now it looks a little bit different than the one I colored before because I used different color inks. I think I used some of the skin tones for this one, but I think I like this one even better than I did the first one. Now we need to do some uh, coloring on our tools. And I'm going to grab a light Highland Heather. Let's go ahead and grab both. I'm going to grab a Smoky Slate. So I'm going to do these two colors first. And I'm going to come in with Let's do the dark first. I like to edge things in dark because it just makes them look more realistic. So I'm going to come in with the dark Highland Heather and just come in here like that. Maybe around that ribbon right there in the middle a little bit. And over here, like that. I'm going to take the lighter. We're going to come back and just kind of drag some color. grab a yellow and we're going to grab the Daffodil Delight and for this one I think I'm going to do the dark and I'm just going to color in this ribbon see a little bit here that I didn't get. This will more than likely be done into the basket, but in case it's not, now I'm going to use my light gray granite. And this is going to give us a silver look to our scissors. Everything that we color will lighten up as it dries. That is true with any alcohol marker. So there's our scissors. All right, so we need um, our glue bottles. We've got a pencil over here. I think with the pencil, we're going to do... pumpkin pie and a yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and make the pencil yellow. And then we're going to do our little uh, top areas orange. And then we're going to come in with the red, light red eraser. And there's our pencil. Now 
I'm gonna grab a old olive green, light and dark, and we're gonna do our glue bottles. So let's do our label dark and our top dark. And then let's come in with our lighter color. Also grab the granny apple green we have gotten lots and lots of um, blends out here but I'm keeping my color families together which will make it easier when I put them back to have them kind of together so let's go in with the gr dark granny apple green and I think I'm gonna do the inside this time and do the top and the label light just to give it a little contrast. Okay. Now I think I want pink. So let's grab our blushing god, or is that flirty flamingo? Flirty flamingo. Let's grab that, and we're going to do this tablet back here. Going around the edge with the dark. Like so. Then I'm going to use the light pink to go in and just kind of darker blue and I think for that one I'm going to use the Orchid Up Aces. It's really a pretty color. I'm going in with the light and we're going to make our ink pen that color. Now I left that little clip on there that color for a reason. Decided I wanted that to look silver. So smoky slate. And the other pen, I think I want it to be red. So let's go ahead and make it red. I want this one to look more gold, so I'm going to go in with the dark daffodil delight. And that's our scrap, our um, all of our craft supplies are colored. I'm going to put all my stampin' blends up here, and I use quite a few, but I wanted that to be beautiful. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on my trimmer. I'm going to trim off this piece over here. So let's see how far over we can go. Maybe to right there. Slice that off. And I'm going to slice this off right here. And that can go back into my bin. And now all we need to do is die cut these. Now if you see I have a little bleeding around the top of that. This is where our corrector pen comes in so handy. So I'm going to take this corrector pen and I'm just going to go over top of this. This gets rid of any of your bleed. I think we're pretty good down here. A little bit right there. 
You'll be surprised how fast that will dissipate and you won't have any color there. All right, we're gonna grab our dies. And we know we want to cut out our bucket. And we want to cut out our craft supplies. Something like that. And then we're going to go ahead and cut this down, making sure we're not wiggling. Move our dies over to the side and then we can grab our stamp and cut and emboss machine. I'm going to use my big one today because this is a larger um, stamp and die. So I'm going to open it up and I know this is not fitting. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. And we'll see if we can turn it a little bit like that. Grab our plates which is a number one, a number two, and two number threes. I have my dedicated cut plate on. And we're gonna lay this in, and I'm gonna put it a little bit at an angle, cover it with my cut, with my other plate, and we're gonna crank it through. something like that but you can see we've got a little extra right there don't be afraid to take your snips let's zoom back in don't fit, be afraid to take your snips and trim around anything that did not cut as well as you wanted it to so just go around Good, and we're going to do the same thing with our basket. Now the jazz did their job. They're supposed to leave a little white border, but I decided that I did not want that white border. And then let's cut down this side. And now your pieces are cut. debris off of my desk and in the trash and this little piece right here cuts what looks like a little um, cloth that can go into your basket and I am going to grab a piece of gorgeous grape I just need a little scrap for this and I'm going to put it on about like that give it a little stick so it will stay in place 
This time I am going to bring up the mini because I can. And this is a smaller piece, so it, we shouldn't have any problems with this one. And I've got my number one plate and two number two plates. So number one plate goes down, then your dedicated cut plate, your die cut, and a cover plate. And we're going to crank it through. And look at that. Cut and embossed in one swipe. I love it. I'm so glad they made dies today with texture because you know there was a time back in the day you would have had to run this to an embossing folder um, after you cut it but now we can get these beautiful textures on our pieces and look how pretty that turned out so pretty all right let's put our die back in our case and let's go ahead and get our card back over and start to build it. Alright, this piece is going to get mounted on here. But remember, we're going to pop it up on some Stampin' Dimensionals. And that looks like an overkill, but since this is going to be on the top and it is going to get a lot of wear and tear, I thought, why not? Let's go ahead and build it up. Let's go ahead and set this on to our mat of Daffodil Delight. So pretty. Now what we want to do is I want to glue this behind there, but I can see a little tiny bit of white still showing. So I'm going to take my, my paper snips and I'm just going to snip that off. And I'm going to run a bead of glue along the bottom of this. And then I'm just going to glue this onto to the back of my basket just like that. Now we're going to turn the whole thing over and we're going to pop this up on some dimensionals but before we do let's see if we want to use this I think I am going to use um so many dimensionals and maybe one right here at the bottom and let's lay this up here like so 
All right, so now we're ready to set our craft supplies down, and I think they're going to go right about here. And of course, we're going to pop it up, so let's grab our dimensionals again. Then we're going to find exactly where we want to set this, and I think right about here. Love that. I should have stamped before I did this. Mm. Yeah, before I did the dimensions, I should have stamped. I made a boo-boo because I wanted to stamp my sentiment right there. You fill my days with happiness. And I should have done that before I put the dimensionals on. So that was my mistake. Let's see if we can still stamp it. We can try it. If we don't, if it's a flop, then you know what? We'll just we'll cut a piece and stamp over it. that's going to stamp there considering I've got stamping dimensionals under there but we're going to try it Not bad, considering I had stamped dimensionals under there. I think we did pretty good. What do y'all think? <laughs> that was a boo-boo on my part, so I do apologize. I should have stamped that before I put that um, down, but hey, things happen and we forget sometimes. So I think I'm still dealing with fog on the brain from COVID. I'm not sure. Um, I started running a fever again last night. And um, I don't know where this is coming from. I did look up some signs and symptoms. And if after you've recovered from COVID, you come down ill again, it's something called long COVID or post COVID. And many people suffer from this. And I'd heard people talk about it, but I was so hoping that it was not going to be a reality of mine. Mm, that's so crooked. Let's take that up and let's try it again. I'm going to turn this sideways and see if that will help me line it up a little better. That's much better. Give that a press. Now we're ready to do our inside. And I did not do anything on the inside of this one, but for this one I am going to... I'm going to use some liquid glue. And then we'll set this down right about here. Give it a good press. And now we can go ahead and adhere this inside of our card. Again, I'm going to use stamp and seal. It's quicker. And let's fold that back. And there you go. There is our card for today. There it is, done in two different colors. Both are equally gorgeous. Um, it is a matter of preference of which one you like the best. Uh, Color-wise, I don't know. I like them both. I can't really decide. But I do love pink and yellow together. And I love pink and green together. Maybe I should have opted for green. That would be another... Um, very uh, lovely choice so I'm gonna pull these down like this so that y'all can see how just how beautiful they both are and let me know in the comments if you love this and if this is a card you would send to a crafting buddy I know that I would 
So thank you so much for tuning in today. As I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Father in Heaven. You know, Jesus paid the ultimate price for us, and the least we can do is give it back to Him with praise and honor. So until we craft again, God bless and keep you. Bye-bye.